The Arnold Clark Reel Sale is now on. Welcome to the Football Show. It is Thursday. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you very much for your company. Uh, the days in 2018 are running out, but thankfully the fitness of Alan Ruff and Gordon Smith is not in question. I just have to apologise on behalf of Ruffy and myself that we are not quite the company that Gordon Smith has been keeping over the last few days. Mm. Uh, just mixing it with Paul McCartney, Ruffy, just one of his heroes. Uh, it must be a climb down coming into this <laughs> studio, Ruffy. That's all I can say. Fantastic. Uh... You know, none of us reach the heady heights of pop stars like that, but Gordon's best pal. Well, that's what happens yeah. when you've played in an FA Cup final for Brighton. You get to mix with that sort. Um, of course, is he your all-time pop hero? We always talk about who's your all-time football hero, is it? Yeah. yeah? Well, I think he is, yes, yeah. definitely. I, I was a big Beatles fan when I was younger until they split up, and then, then I found out that it was really Paul McCartney that was my favourite one because the, I liked the songs he sang. And generally the one, whoever wrote the song, sang the song, so he became my favourite. Yeah, well, Gordon, we've got a special surprise for you. Here's the headlines. It would have been fabulous if Paul McCartney walked into the studio, but it just wasn't to be, Ruffy. Uh, lots to talk about, including, of course, uh, Stephen Robinson with a five-match <coughs> man, uh, two of them suspended, so he'll miss the next three games. We will discuss that, as well as the possibility of Celtic appealing to the Australian national squad to get Tom Rogic uh, available for the Old Firm Derby coming up on the 29th. Hibs could have actually cancelled their Edinburgh Derby because they have three players on international duty for Australia, but all all those topics will be discussed in the programme. Um, but here's how it works, Ruffy. What you do is, somewhere along the line, maybe an agent, maybe your best mate says, there's a few English clubs looking at uh, Callum McGregor and then suddenly Celtic sign him on a five-year extended deal. Yeah, I have to say, of all the, the Celtic young players who have come through in the last year or so, he's definitely one you would want to give a five-year deal to. There will be clubs, obviously, noticed how, how well he's progressed in the Celtic team and in the national side as well. So... I think they're just protecting themselves. Yeah, a uh, homeboy. I don't see him being uh, in any way lured down south unless it was something crazy that was offered to Celtic. Uh, but I think if ever a boy deserved it, as Ruffy said, it's Callum McGregor. I, I totally agree. I, I was. I remember even at times saying that I was surprised he wasn't in a game for Scotland because I really did rate him from quite early on. I think he's got so much about his game, his touch, his control, his ability to see the pass. I think the only thing he needs to add to his game, in my opinion, is goals. I think, it, I think he should be capable of scoring more goals. I've seen some of the ones he has scored where he's just gone and placed the ball in the net. So I think he's capable of getting more goals. But he's been playing slightly deeper in recent weeks too, more of a holding role. But I think that uh, for years to come, I mean, he's, he's, only, he's 25 now. So I think that it's a, it's a great uh, contract for him to get a five-year deal. And, you know, there must be seen the fact that there is interest from down south. I would imagine there is. That's a good point that Gordon makes there because, you know, he's calm enough that he can pass the ball into the net, but he's got a good left peg. He scored goals when he was on loan at Notts County as well. He can score, uh, you know, but I think maybe the role yeah. that Brendan Rodgers has put him into with Scott Brown and the alternate, whether he's in the side or not, mm -hmm. it, you know, it kind of lends itself to him being more defensively minded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think he, you, you've hit it in the head. You know, that is his role, you know, to link up with everybody and play on the park and as many positions he wants to play. You know, unfortunately, it's not in the forward position because you see like Ryan Christie going by people, which is his strength. Uh, Armstrong as well, when he was there, that was his strength going by people going forward. But I, I still think he's got goals in him. You know, I think he's got, uh, if he can get near that 18 yard line, that he's not too frightened. He's not frightened to have a go. Yep, well, he's part of a Celtic side that go back to the top of the table. Gordon Smith, 3 0 against Motherwell. In the end, Motherwell didn't really offer any great resilience. If the high is the three points, the low is that Celtic now have no strikers because Eduard came off the park injured. Yeah, I mean, that is a bit of a blow for them, as I say, because they, they have to rely on other people, obviously, to get the goals. But, you know, with what's happened with Lee Griffiths' problems, Edward injured, you know, and as I say, it's, it's a bit of a, 
a blow for them. I think that uh, it would be interesting to see whether, I mean, he has been trying out the younger players as well. Obviously, brought in the kids last night to, again, Brendan Rodgers, but they hit the top. It's a good result for them because Motherwell had a, an excellent performance at the weekend, beating St. John's away from home. <coughs> By all accounts, they played very well and uh, they would realise that, you know, they were off the top position, but to get a comfortable win like that, 3-0 it was at half time, so they were cruising after that. And uh, they've got big games coming up. They've obviously got Aberdeen and Rangers to play before the break. But all the teams up in that level have got big games. So uh, Celtic, as I say, they are get, they've got the strongest squad. But there is a bit of a loss when they when they have to do without a striker. Yeah, and this is coming back to bite the board on the backside, uh, Ruffy, because quite simply, if you're looking at why they've lost pace, it's because you know the players. Mm -hmm. Rightly or wrongly, when he came out and criticised the board, Brendan Rodgers mentioned that he needed players in and it fell on deaf ears and they sold them belly. Yeah, I think at the time we were all uh, trying to guess. Uh, he would have handed in a piece of paper with certain names on it, players' uh, priority, maybe players just under that. I do think there would have been a striker in it if Dumbelli was, was going to be moving. So, yeah. although we all spoke about McGinn being the main one, I'm sure there'll be other players that were on that list that he wanted. Here's an interesting one, and it'll bring me nicely into, you know, whether it be Rangers, Aberdeen, uh, Hebs, Hearts, whatever. There are some people suggesting, oh, Rangers should go for Lauren Shanklin or Celtic should buy him or somebody should maybe look at Stephen Doby for a for a one-year deal. Uh, even Johnny Russell has said he's feeling a little bit homesick. Is that the calibre that Celtic and Rangers, Hebs, Hearts, Aberdeen might be looking at, Kilmarnock as well? It could be in one respect that, that if, if they're going to sign somebody who is going to then keep Edouard and, and, and Griffiths out of the team or keep... Morelos out the team, that's different. You need to go for a, a fair bit of money. But if you want to bring in somebody in the short term who, when these players are back fit, becomes third choice, then they don't have to spend that kind of money. Lon Shangland, I, I think he's a, an excellent player. I mean, his, his goal scoring record is tremendous. There's, there's some of the things you've got to look at and say whether if he, if he plays at a higher level, and this is what scouts need to do, they have to be able to analyse it and judge whether he can do it at a higher level. and because you'll get more chances made from playing for a team like you know Rangers or Celtic or whatever. And if he can put the ball away in the net as he's been doing just now at United, then it would become a target for them. So I, I believe for strikers, one of the key aspects is, is the stats of it, Peter. As somebody who's got an average that scores like two, at least two goals every three games is a player that can do, can do it at the highest level. Yeah, I, again, you know, I agree with, with Gordon to a certain extent. There are levels that you play at. You know, you see players... I'm, I'm just picking Lee Griffiths, you know, Lee Griffiths was fantastic with Celtic, but when he went up to the Scotland team, at the early stages, Graham uh, Gordon Stratton said, no, he's not of a standard mm -hmm. that can play against that level of uh, international players. So I think there is levels you go up, but there are certain players can, can buck that system, you know, if they come in. And the strikers particularly, if they're confident in scoring goals, and as Gordon said, they've got better players round about them. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll get chances. There's two great examples down in England <coughs> who came from a low... Ian Wright was one who yep. came to Arsenal and, and became from a low level. Jamie Vardy. Jamie Vardy was non-league yeah. two or three seasons before he was at Leicester, right? And so nobody rated him then. He's playing non-league football down in England and then the next thing, he's, he's a league champion, wins top scorer for Leicester. So you've got to be able to pinpoint it and that's the, the quality you're looking for in a scout to be able to actually the judge and decide whether somebody can perform at a higher level. Yeah, uh, just to clarify things, because I know there can be an element of uncertainty and then we start to get lip readers in. Uh, Ruffy did say buck the system there, uh, just to <laughs> get things absolutely clear with you. Um, just before just before we go to the break, can I, can I get your thoughts on Tom Rogic, Gordon? <laughs> because quite simply, you know, he could be on international duty with Australia, but suddenly Celtic are saying, look, you know, we'd like him held back. He'll join up with you at some point, but we'd yeah. like him held back for the the, inter, the the international and play for Celtic in the game against Rangers. No firm game. Yeah, well, I, I can see why they would want somebody like Roger there. I mean, he is a player who gives teams trouble when if he's on, if he's on his game, and the Rangers would certainly have trouble from it because he's a hard player to pick up. You need somebody that can can match him, somebody that can get in the midfield. So I can understand why Celtic would want to do that because these tournaments at this time of year. 
uh, do cause a bit of disruption, there's no doubt about it. Well, why aren't Hibs doing it, Ruffy? Because mm. that's three key, key players, Martin Boyle, Mark Milligan, Jamie McLaren. Surely they need them for the Edinburgh Derby. Yeah, I would yeah. have thought so as well. But obviously Neil Lennon uh, maybe sees something that he doesn't. You yeah. know, I'm sure I'll tell you what he sees, chance. he's wait, waiting to see how Celtic get on. Uh, <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then he'll just play his ace yeah. card well, on I think this, I think this is the time when a, an international manager's got to have some liaison with a club manager because at yeah. some stage he's going to need him. Yeah. You know, so I think they've just had a bit of chat. OK, there you are. Ruffy's uh, just uh, summed it all up for us. Just a wee bit of a chat between them and then uh, eventually, uh, hopefully they'll be involved in those key games. OK, we've still got something to talk about uh, with regards to last night's fixtures because at Easter Road we were hoping for a cracker. The last time the two of them met at Easter Road it was five each. Surely there was going to be goals. Hebs against Rangers. Look how it ended. Only one of us predicted the right score in the studio. A couple of disciplinary <coughs> matters to have a quick chat about before we discuss Hibs against Rangers from last night. Uh, first of all, Stephen Robinson uh, finds himself in a sticky wicket, uh, roughly because he's been given a five-game touchline ban. This is for criticism of the officials after that 7-1 defeat uh, by Rangers. He accused him of uh, being conned uh, by the Rangers striker Alfredo Morelos. And um, he obviously mentioned that a fourth official was out of his depth. Uh, so as soon as you mention that, <laughs> you know, you're in trouble, you're going up there. Um, two of the matches will be suspended, but he, he misses the next three. Yeah, I, th I think the powers of be now are, are trying to get through it. The manager's right, we've had enough. Uh, these uh, referees have got a hard enough job as it is without you coming out and criticising them and making their, their job even harder. So we're now seeing, you know, discipline being thrown out there, hoping that it'll curtail it in the long run. And certainly fines and bans, would, you, you would think that managers would say, OK, maybe I've got to try and watch what I'm saying. I don't see why there's anything wrong where uh, managers saying the referee was conned by a player. Because that, that for me, it means he's criticising the player. And the referee has been conned by it. Because yeah. that's what simulation <coughs> is. And but that's I, think, what... I think his criticism of the match official being out of his depth yes. is, is a personal analysis of his profession. Yeah, that, that's more serious. And, and I think that's why they're trying to hit down on that. They're trying to stop this because referees... You know, I've been getting a hard time of late. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it's been happening on a week to week, -to -week basis, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. The other thing about it is, it, it, is if he offers that he thinks Morelos conned the referee, um, if that was indeed the case, and it's so blatantly obvious to everyone, I'm with Gordon on this one. I don't think you should get the fine. But nevertheless, if 2018 has taught us anything, Ruffy, mm -hmm. <laughs> despite the fines, the bans, the players and the managers are steaming in there because yeah. it's just... It, I've never known it. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being hypercritical of this season, but I've never known it to be as bad. You know, there's been a, a real condemnation of match officials, you know, managers, players, all fighting, all being out of order. Is this the... Is this the rise of the, 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 the social media and everybody, you know, want to offer their ten pens worth or tuppence worth on anything? Yeah, I think obviously, basically what we're always saying, if you throw somebody in front of a camera right after the incident, then you're going to get some kind of reaction. Uh, and that's what's been happening. Some of them, particularly Craig Levine, have tried to be doing it tongue in cheek, yeah. you know, trying to make it sort of a, <laughs> you know, well, but funny as you have it. Funny as you have it, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think they're not going to have that either. You know, if you're going to come out and, and say anything bad about the referees, then this is what's going to happen to you. Well, I think that's because they're all having to go more, you know, more or less, if, if nobody else was coming, they would think twice maybe, but because other managers are doing it as well, think, well, why should I know? I mean, do, you think this is, do you think this is the worst year, Gordon, for, for, for uh, indiscipline, comments coming out, criticism? Yes, well, the worst I can remember, yeah. I don't remember it ever happening as, as much as it's been this season. I don't know. Do you, what do you think, Ruffy? Yeah, I think. What, what, what was it the last time when, remember, the referees went and strike? Mm -hmm. And yeah. we brought. What was this? It was McDonald when. It was the referee McDonald, wasn't was it? Was it enough? Yeah. Is was enough? That not for the, the, the Dundee United situation. Dundee United situation, that's right, yeah. But, I mean, as I say, but that was one off situation. But this is, this is more serious this year because there's been an awful lot of criticism. And it's all very well to, to criticise the referee, but if, it, if it's any indication at all that you're suggesting the referee is a, is a degree of bias there or whatever, then that has to be dealt with because you know that that I can see why the authorities 
are not going to accept that. Yep. Okay. Uh, off the back of that, as I just check here, I was just checking to see exactly what year that Scottish referee's um, strike was. Uh, it hasn't been that long ago. I think it's within the last ten years, definitely five uh, years. Maybe even. sooner than that. It was after yep. that. I, I was I was away. It was uh, Stuart Reagan was in charge at the yeah. SFA at the time. Yeah. I'll I'll nail it, Gordon, before we leave this studio. Okay. Um, now talking about uh, you know fines handed out, Rangers on the uh, receiving end of the fine from the SFA <clears> as well, and uh, it's a breach of the rules. They were up for five counts. They only actually had their hands out for the belt for two. A breach of disciplinary rule 72. That was proved. £5,000 fine for that one. Uh, and then rule 71 not proved. Rule 77 proved. And disciplinary rule not proved. Each member shall procure that its officials, its team officials and its players act in accordance with rule one is withdrawn. So in the end, Ruffy, £6,000 fine for Rangers as you would expect, Rangers not too happy with yeah. this. Am I, am I right in saying that, that this is a fine directed at the club and not Stephen Gerrard? Because I don't remember Stephen Gerrard coming out and doing any of these disciplinary no, it's a club, things. It's a club statement. Yeah, yeah, but, a, the, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The other ones we're talking about is the managers doing something. Uh -huh. This is not the manager. No, no. This is yeah. the club. This is uh, the club the, statement, yeah. The £5,000 fine um, is relating to the criticism of match official and indicating bias or incompetence uh, uh, and the additional 1000 for not acting in the best interests of association football. Rangers statement on this, as you would expect, we are pleased that the majority of charges raised against the club have been dismissed. Missed. We remain convinced that the second yellow and red card issued to Daniel Candace was mistaken and should have been rescinded. But it seems clear that for a red card issued after a second yellow to be rescinded in circumstances where an obvious refereeing error has occurred will require a change to the rule book. Rangers will be pressing for that change to be made and would hope that the Scottish FA would support this request. So uh, they've accepted the technicalities of it, um, yeah. but they still want the rule changed. And that's a chance at the start of the season season as Ruffy always mentions you know the rules you know they're in place don't wait till midway through the season to complain about them yeah exactly but that, I agree with them totally on the on the rule change because yeah. we we discussed it that night and said that it, is, it is crazy that you can't appeal a, a yellow card but the fact is that if a, one of the yellow cards leads to a red you're a red card and you can appeal a red card so why can't you appeal a red card if the yellow card's wrong so I agree totally with the statement there that ha this has to be looked at and there's no doubt about it. You can't. I think it was like you know they they were quite heavy in their criticism, and they'll understand why they've been fined for that. But I do feel that the real change has to come. Yeah, 2010 was that year, Gordon, when the Scottish referees. Hard to believe, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so there you have it. Uh, I think they were bringing in referees from Israel, Luxembourg, and Malta. Malta. There you are. Um, what about the game, uh, Ruffy? It promised so much, but in the yeah. end. Uh, my own personal opinion, I thought Rangers should have won it by about four or five goals. Hibbs missed a couple of chances as well, but Rangers looked so far out in front. Morelis could have had a hat trick. Yeah, the chances and the highlights, uh, and they all, unfortunately for Rangers, and last night they all fell to Morelis. Mm. I thought strikers being strikers, I thought on numerous occasions he was a bit greedy, you know, but I mean, striker wants to score goals. I thought there was a couple of times he could have laid off to people in better positions, but he didn't. Uh, Ollie Shaw had a couple of chances. I think that saw Hibbs yeah. really hid in the yeah, game. He had, so right. he had a tremendous game, Morelis, apart from his finishing. Well, can I ask you something? Yeah. <laughs> That's a headline in itself, yeah. Gordon. But yeah. nevertheless, why, would, if you're a striker like Morelis and you're watching the rest of them who can't score goals and everybody is absolutely you know, lauding Ended his him. return, yeah. well, if you're Morelis... You wouldn't even contemplate it, passing it to anybody else. They can't score goals. Yeah. He's the man banging the goals in. He's the man and he's been in great form. But as I say, I was watching it last night. He, he, he was giving Hibbs so many problems just with his strength and his power, his, his positional sense. But the one thing he couldn't do was put the ball in the net. I've seen him a lot of times actually where he has missed a lot of chances. I remember a game against Aberdeen. I was out there one night and he missed three sitters and scored the most difficult chance of the four. So he, he got a goal. But I would say last night, Peter, I've got to be honest with you, I thought it was a tremendous game. I yeah. thought, see the pace it was played at and the intensity and you could tell that you the players... You think it was a tremendous game? I thought it was. I'll tell you why I, I, I thought that. I remember at one time watching it and the, and the commentator said, well, five minutes from half time and I looked at the clock. I couldn't believe... We'd played 40 minutes because yeah. I, I felt it went went like that. I, thought I was, it was actually really going to good. get an A4 bit of paper out to see if uh, Hibs when they actually were able to string three passes together. They were good at certain parts of the game. They, 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 didn't, they tried to play the way they played on Sunday against Celtic, which was, was really good, and it didn't quite work out. Rangers really stopped them playing that yeah. way. Rangers did a lot of good things last night. 
apart from the putting the ball in the net. But you're, you're right, you should win more goals. I mean, yeah. definitely. Rangers should have won it out of the park. Listen, yeah. just a quick one on Aberdeen. A couple of quick things. Ruffy, uh, Andrew Considine says that Aberdeen has sneaked into the title race. Do you think they're in there? Uh, not on the basis of it beating Dundee. You know, Dundee have been hammered a few times this year. And I think it's on the basis that they're now close to all points, the other teams. It's a pointage, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I think you've got to look at the games that they've played as well. The big game coming up against Celtic. That's when we start judging them whether they're back in it again. Mm -hmm. OK, the other thing, Gordon, Stuart Milne, Aberdeen chairman, says that the SPFL risk losing fans if they repeat this fixture pile-up. I mean, of all times, fixture pile-up in the festive period when money's tight. I think that's right. I think that's a problem with it. I think there's been too many games uh, at this time of the month. I think they, they do have to look at that again. I think Stuart Milne's got a good point. Yeah, I don't know why we've got a fixture pile-up. We haven't had any bad weather yet. Mm. Wait till we have bad weather and then we'll get a pile up. I don't I don't understand why we, we don't, when the weather's good, play Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday mm -hmm. to stop this. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I just think, uh, you know, too many games, a lot of teams picking up, uh, you know, injuries to key players. Yeah. It, it devalues the product that people are actually having to pay to get in the door on. But uh, nevertheless, um, it's all about your opinion as well. Give us your opinion on uh, all these issues uh, across YouTube, Twitter and, of course, Facebook as well. Uh, we leave you tonight in the last 10 seconds of the programme. The only way we know uh, a 64-year-old Gordon Smith, of course, getting close to that birthday uh, will leave us with of course that <coughs> old Beatles classic he'll sing us out with uh, <laughs> when I'm at 64 he's been doing it all week he might as well do it oh we yeah. just ran out of time <laughs> <laughs>Welcome to PLZ Soccer. Why not join the football family and download the PLZ app? You'll get all the latest Scottish football news and up-to-date news on English and world football. There's also a feature here where you can record yourself talking about your favourite team. If we use the video, you could feature on our football show. For all the latest news in Scottish football, download the PLZ Soccer app in the App Store and in Google Play. Come and join the football family on PLZ Soccer. Thank mm -hmm. you.